Minister, unfortunately, we come across daily unacceptable delays in children getting dental treatment. I know that in Cavan at the present time, children should be screened in, four, in second, fourth and sixth classes. What's happening now is the children are, are in the programme for sixth class, but it's actually they've gone to second level before they actually see a dentist. It's a shortage of personnel, and I know the per personnel working locally are working extremely hard, but they don't have the resources of the personnel to give the service that uh, the children in Cavan Monaghan need. <coughs> Deputy, thank you very much for this, and can I acknowledge your ongoing advocacy in terms of dental services, particularly, as you say, children's services and the school-based programme. Um, there have been challenges, and uh, children uh, have been waiting too long uh, a good deal of the delay came about through COVID uh, and the HSC is still in the process of catch-up. The government does invest over 200 million uh, into oral healthcare services annually and to the points you've made around uh, the, the waiting list, there's an additional 17 million in one-off funding uh, has been invested in the lifetime of this government. I fully acknowledge that we need to do more. Uh, in the budget that we announced this week, uh, I've allocated €4 million Euro in full year funding, so €2 million Euro, uh, uh, next year, to continue the implementation of the National Oral Health Policy. Uh, this investment is going to pr provide an additional 15 dental staff across dentists uh, and dental nurses to deliver the oral health care in our community, and to your point, Deputy, to support children to access the current primary school programme of uh, routine checkups. The investment will also initiate delivery of a three-year implementation plan for the policy and reform of our services is really important, obviously, to ensure people of all ages get access to the care uh, that they need. I think, Deputy, you've raised with me in the chamber before orthodontics as well and the need for more support on orthodontics. I'm happy to say uh, that the investments we've been putting in over the last number of years are now yielding results. Last year, we transferred more than 2,000 children nationally uh, to private care, so they got, they, they, they got that care quicker. And, uh, Deputy, from your own constituency, Cavan Monaghan, 128 children were transferred to this care, uh, which, was, which was very important. So the number who are waiting the longest to start treatment has declined nationally um, and, uh, and continues to decline. And rest assured, Deputy, the HSC and our dental professionals, our oral health professionals, uh, will use that €4 million Euro now uh, to continue to push uh, on making sure that these children get access both to the interventions, the checkups, and then the treatment they need in a timely manner. Um, Minister, thank you for, for the reply, and I also acknowledge the, the very substantial increase in resources that you have got for your department for the forthcoming year, and I congratulate you on your. On, on your work in the department along with your Minister of State. Minister, one area, and I, I acknowledge I didn't specific, specify it in my question, was we need to address is patients with disabilities and with complex and additional needs. And think particularly of children with additional needs and complex needs. Oftentimes, it's a multidisciplinary team is needed with all relevant medical professionals for the safe delivery of dental care for such children. At times, it necessitates admission to a day ward in a hospital or to a paediatric ward. And those children, at times, will get the comprehensive dental care under general anaesthetic. Now, I think we need to prioritise the delivery of services for such children. And I, I know that in my own area, we need a, a principal dental surgeon with a special needs um, role in particular. So, Minister, I understand that the suppression of some posts over the past 12 to 14 months, that has impacted on the dental services. So, yeah. Minister, if there's a relaxation in regard to the, the creation of new posts or whatever, I would like to see the area of dental care prioritised, if at all possible, Minister. Uh, many thanks for that, Deputy. Rest assured, there have never been as many staff. Uh, and we, we're hearing claims about suppressions of, uh, of posts. The reality is um, there's nearly 30,000 healthcare workers more uh, working in the HSC now than there were when this government came in. Uh, this week, through the budget, we have funded another 3,500 new posts. And to the end of this year, there are about 2,500 funded posts vacant. So not only uh, have we had a record level of healthcare workers in, in, in the country, but between now and the end of next year, there's another 6,500 vacant posts that are fully funded. 
And however, I fully accept that there are individual teams and individual services that really are under pressure. Um, the good news, Deputy, is that there are funded vacant posts in your area and the HSE is looking to fill them. It includes in the Dundalk Clinic, there are two specialist orthodontic vacancies and there is one consultant orthodontic vacancy. So the money is there, um, the posts are there, uh, recruitment is, is ongoing, and I'll ask the HSE to redouble its efforts to fill those posts as a matter of urgency. I appreciate that, Minister. And I know if you're, if you're concerned for children with complex and additional needs, and could I just read a communication that, that, that I saw from a parent of a child who got dental treatment, and the parent wrote as follows, I feel saddened that those with special needs and who may, not, may be non-verbal can often suffer in silence, distress and anxiety due to pain. Sadly, <coughs> excuse me, sadly my son suffered for a while before we, we realised what was wrong. In an ideal world it would be great if those with special needs had scheduled checkups so that extreme pain that my son experienced could be avoided. It really worries me that those needing special care may be overlooked. Minister, I would appreciate and I know if you're concerned for children with additional needs and for adults with additional needs as well, if you could ensure that the Department of the HSE pay particular attention to the needs of those people with additional needs and ensure that they get the regular dental screening and checkups, routine checkups that they need. Thank you, Akahirli. Yeah, thanks for that, Deputy. Uh, that, that there's no question that should be happening. I, I, I'll talk to Minister O'Gorman about it in terms of disability services. There's a clear overlap between my world of health, which is, which is the oral health policy, but then uh, the linkage into uh, Minister O'Gorman's uh, um, brief in terms of disability services. And, and I, I, I fully agree. Um, all children should be able to get the services, but particularly those who have additional needs and who may not be able to articulate uh, those needs as, um, as well as some other children. So I fully accept that. And you know, Deputy, we're, we're more than capable of this. If you look at the, ortho the general orthodontic waiting list for children in the lifetime of this government, uh, it has fallen by nearly a half. There's been a 44% reduction in the number of children waiting on orthodontic care. Uh, we w we won't hear much about that, that, <laughs> that won't be reported, um, but it's nearly a 50% reduction uh, in the orthodontic list, and let's bring exactly the same determination to the children you quite rightly are talking about this morning.